January 23rd, 2002. A team of Green Berets from 5th Special Forces Group received orders to conduct a night raid on a suspected Al-Qaeda compound in a remote area of southern Afghanistan. The plan was for the Green Berets to sneak into the compound in the dead of night while the enemy was sleeping and clear the building of all hostile forces. But unfortunately, as per usual with these types of combat operations, things didn't go according to plan. The compound was an old schoolhouse Al-Qaeda had taken over and turned into their primary base of operations in the area. When the Green Berets arrived on target, somehow the enemy was wide awake and ready for them. As soon as the team entered the front door, the mother of all firefights kicked off. It was mass chaos and confusion. The team immediately returned fire and began aggressively clearing the building, splitting off in different directions to clear a multitude of classrooms inside the building, each classroom full of armed hostile fighters that were supposed to be sleeping. Master Sergeant Anthony Pryor and one of his teammates were about to enter their first classroom when suddenly an enemy fighter charged out of the room and attempted to tackle Pryor, but the Green Beret was able to drop the man just before he could reach him. Meanwhile, Pryor's teammate was engaged with another enemy fighter attempting to flank them from outside the building, so Pryor had no choice but to enter and clear the classroom alone. Inside the room, he found three armed fighters with their backs turned to him. They were aiming their weapons out of a large window preparing to ambush some of the Green Berets who hadn't made entry yet. So Pryor quickly mag dumped into the three men, dropping them all instantly. With the room now cleared, Pryor took a knee to do a quick mag change. But while he was reloading his weapon, an enemy fighter who had been hiding behind the door snuck up behind Pryor and hit him in the back with a large metal pipe, breaking his collarbone and dislocating his shoulder. The man then jumped on Pryor's back, ripped off his night vision, and began jamming his fingers into Pryor's eyes. But Pryor wasn't going down without a fight. He grabbed hold of the man on his back and threw him over his head, slamming him into the ground in front of him. He slammed the enemy fighter so hard it knocked his own dislocated shoulder back into place. And with both arms now back into the fight, he quickly eliminated the hostile fighter with his bare hands. But unfortunately, the fight wasn't quite over yet. Pryor fumbled in the dark trying to get his helmet and night vision back on, and thankfully he got his nods on just in time to see the men he thought he took care of when he first entered the room still alive and crawling towards their weapons. So Pryor quickly reached for his rifle and took out the three men. With that room now cleared, Pryor simply exited the room and joined his teammates to finish clearing the rest of the building. He didn't mention anything about his broken collarbone or the terrifying situation he just survived until they were back at base much later that night. As Pryor and the team cleared the rest of the compound, they got in several more extremely close range gunfights, some of which were just feet away from the enemy. After eliminating more than 20 hostile fighters, the team began what they call SSE, which stands for Sensitive Site Exploitation, which basically means they started carefully searching the entire compound, looking for weapons and ammunition or any valuable intel like phones and laptops. Any intel they found was bagged up and taken back to base with them, and any weapons or ammo was thrown into a pile and destroyed with explosives so it couldn't be used against the American military or our allies in the future. The Green Berets would also often take a prisoner back to base for questioning on missions like this, but by the end of this specific mission, there weren't any hostile fighters left to question, so they didn't have to worry about that on this one. 
When the dust settled, 21 enemy soldiers had been eliminated, and all of the Americans were alive. Several years later, in 2007, Pryor was awarded the Silver Star for his actions that night. During the ceremony, Major General Jeffrey Lambert, Commanding General of the U.S. Army Special Forces Command, said, This is the singular hand-to-hand -hand combat story that I have heard from this war. When it came time to play, he played and he did it right. I wasn't really able to find any photos of Pryor that really do it justice, but some of his teammates that were there that night have spoken about him in interviews and they describe him as being an outrageously large man, which going off of how quickly and easily he eliminated that hostile fighter despite his injuries makes a lot of sense. And the fact that he was able to reach over his head and throw that dude onto the ground despite having a dislocated shoulder and a broken collarbone is insane, let alone the fact that he slammed that dude in the ground so hard that it knocked his own freaking shoulder back into place. This is just, this is one of the craziest stories I've ever told and it it's wild, dude. And I will never understand how he was so unshaken by that near-death experience and his injuries that his teammates couldn't even tell anything had happened to him. He took out four hostile fighters completely alone, one of which was taken out in hand-to-hand -hand combat. And then with a broken collarbone and a dislocated shoulder, he ran out of the room to join back up with his teammates like nothing happened. But even more than that, his teammates reported that the first and only thing he said to them when he came out of the room was, is everyone okay out here? After all of that, his only concern was making sure his teammates were okay. If you guys want to see the footage that was too graphic for me to put in this video on YouTube, I have a link to my Patreon in the description below. The reason I've started this Patreon is because combat footage is heavily censored in public social media platforms, but Patreon is a private subscription based platform which means we don't have to worry about videos being censored or removed from the page. War is hell but it's an important part of history, and I believe it is incredibly important to document that portion of our history so we can learn from it and hopefully prevent it in the future. So I hope you will support the Patreon and help me save as much footage as possible before it's too late. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, you should definitely check out this video on screen right now. But I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for all the support, and I will see you guys in the next video.